we talk a lot because a lot of the stuff we talk about is sort of the cool and excited and hyped. But underneath all these architectures, Pat, has got to be some practical, usable technologies. And SAP announced what it calls Datasphere. And Datasphere is basically built on its business technology platform. And what it's really trying to do is create an output for companies more efficiently and effectively using their data. And again, liken this to the generative AI conversation, Pat, and you've heard me say this many times on this show over the last few weeks, some of the most interesting opportunities to be successful with generative AI is gonna be based upon companies being able to expose and utilize the vast proprietary data that lives inside of their business. Much of this proprietary data, much of this unique usable data set that better understands customers, workflows, business uh, performance, guess where it lives? It lives in your systems of record. Right. Systems of record like Oracle, like SAP. So this becomes a big challenge for companies like SAP to say, how do we develop tools that enable our customers and our, our users to unlock the power of all the data? And that's really what data spheres, it's, a, it's the SAP data warehouse cloud. It's a data lake, warehouse, river, stream, mountain view, valley, brook. <laughs> it is going to enable, you know, discovery, modeling, distribution of, of critical data. And it's going to do so in a way that's both lives inside of SAP, inside of, inside of data sphere. Bless you. By the way. Thank you. Um, but it's also going to be ecosystem friendly. And so it's all about A, being able to use your existing data, B, being able to use data models and curated data sets that, that come from uh, SAP in their data sphere marketplace. And then of course, it's about you know simplification and ecosystem. So building integrations with Databricks, with Confluent, with Data Robot. Um, and these are gonna be really important things going forward because you know, Pat, another thing that's critical for success is going to be connectivity. You've got, you know, you've got your uh, structured data, your unstructured data, you got your real-time stream data, you've got your legacy and then storage data, and you, having all that data, all of it to be accessible, all of it to be utilized, and then being able to be commonly shared and collaborated upon, which is part of the data sphere solution, is really important. In the end, what did we get, Pat? We get a data fabric, just like my vests. By the way, I just want to say I, I was the only guy at that party last week that didn't have a suit coat on. Call me out. Yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, I think. I, did you see Axe there by chance? Was he invited? Yeah, Axe is my hero, except for all the bad things he does. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so seeing a fabric created that basically allows companies to enrich all the data across all their ecosystems and then integrate it, and then finally, you know, I guess my last note on on data sphere is the tool, the warehouse, the fabric is all really promising. And of course, SAP has hundreds of thousands of customers. So this is not going to be something that is, is it will not be received and be importantly and critically uh, looked at, but the advisory and large SIs should be beneficiaries of this. And the company is planning to roll this out with IBM, with Capgemini, with Deloitte, with Ernst & Young, uh, and of course, uh, Accenture being the biggest of the bunch. So, you know, it's early days for this tool, Pat, but I think this is the kind of technology that's saying, how do we take our all our data, make it usable, representable, collaborative, and accessible, and then connect it to the other core data applications that we're using, and then make it SI friendly, because most of this stuff gets done for large enterprises by SIs. And so this is what SAP is doing. This is what SAP, I think, has historically always uh, attempted to do, but in this particular moment when data is going to become even more critical to apps and AI, it's an important launch from the company. Uh, good breakdown, Daniel. Uh, a few adders here. Uh, this is very consistent with, uh, I think, both of our talk tracks related to data about this notion of a data pipeline, all the way from bringing it in, bringing the data in, streaming or, or batch uh, any way you want, uh, let's uh, clean it up uh, along the entire pipeline, uh, know uh, who gets access to it. So the governance, the privacy, the compliance, uh, and then uh, teeing it up, uh, you know, either in a data lake, a data warehouse, a structured uh, database, a non-structured uh, database, uh, and then uh, setting it up ultimately, if you want uh, to augment it with uh, uh, AI, or analytics. 
and then deploying uh, those models uh, to be run. Uh, and by the way, every step of that way, uh, a company called Cloudera that you and I have been covering, they actually do every single thing that uh, Datasphere uh, talks about. And the difference is that SAP is bringing out with, with looks like Cloudera's biggest competitors, Databricks, Calibra, Confluent, and, uh, and Data Robot. So it, it's super interesting. Uh, what I really like about it is the value that, that it does bring to the table. It's inflows and outflows. So if you're a customer and you have things going on uh, in Databricks, Calibra, Confluent, uh, Data Robot, uh, you can not only pull in data from those services and use it inside of an SAP environment, but SAP can also export, elegantly export that information out to these uh, environments uh, as, as well. Kind of reminds me of kind of the, these data sharing uh, alliances that, that SAP and Microsoft uh, have done in the past. Uh, but this is with some of these smaller uh, niche uh, niche uh, players. And exclamation point, uh, Daniel, on what you said about the different types of data, the advantage that SAP has is the operation data is there, okay? So instead of ETLing it, do it there, right? So uh, it, it, it it's very similar to a mainframe story as it relates to, let's say, financial transactions. Why ETL it out when you can do it right there? Uh, you get, um, we all know you add extra cost by moving data. Anytime you have to move data somewhere, it it costs you money. And it also opens you up to security risks every time you move data uh, as well. So uh, interesting announcement uh, from these folks. And I also, I also, it, it almost looks like this, um, I don't know if it replaces SAP Warehouse Cloud, but uh, it certainly uh, certainly looks like it. 